war by definition is a messy business, but in the end, it's the only way to protect ourselves. The cartels are now paramilitary organizations with their own armies. They rule northern Mexico as quasi-sovereign states. In 1971, President Nixon declared a war on drugs. We're losing. The cartels are winning. And they will keep winning. And Americans will keep dying at record numbers till our leadership wages war on the cartels in a language they understand. Indianapolis-based radio host and host of the nationally syndicated Eat, Drink, Bourbon, Smoke show, Tony Katz, with us now. Good to see you, my friend. Um, all right, am I, am I too far off base here? No, I, I actually thought that was rather strong from you, you know, uh, to, to come out and say, what's so crazy about this idea? I thought the clips that you played from, from CNN were very, very telling in that it's very obvious that none of them have ever spent any time on a bar stool anywhere. When you spend your life in a faculty lounge, you don't actually hear people discussing actual ways to solve actual problems. It doesn't mean it's the only way to solve a problem, but if this conversation happened, as, as the former Secretary of Defense, Mark Esper, uh, says about it, that Trump wants to do this or, 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 or that, I don't know if I believe what Esper is saying in the book. I haven't read the book, etc. But the idea as a concept that Americans would say, why don't we just take these people out already? Of course, that's a conversation. That's a conversation well across America. It just never makes it into the newsroom of CNN. Uh, it's, it's a great point. And you think about in the newsroom of CNN, they are just aghast at the idea of, of how could we do this? Now, we'll, we'll send all the weapons in the world to Ukraine, which you and I have talked about. We may have slightly different views on that. But uh, then you think about somebody like J.D. Vance. He caught an awful lot of flack uh, for the, follow, the coming soundbite. Uh, but in a way, from a voter perspective and those on the bar stool, he may have been onto something. Take a listen. No, no doubt he's way more in touch in terms of what people in Ohio are thinking about and caring about, and I'm sure in Indiana as well, than uh, the CNN hosts. Focus matters greatly. And I don't think there's anything wrong with the United States providing uh, military assistance in terms of weaponry uh, to Ukraine. I don't want any troops. And I don't want to hear any more bragging about how we're helping to kill Russian generals. What a ridiculous thing. Keep your mouths closed already. But we hear about uh, South American uh, crime rings going on right here in central Indiana, towns uh, just to the east of me. It's happening. And these are the things that people are talking about, not just the bar stool. They're talking about as they drop the kids off the school. They're talking about in supermarkets. And the the concept that, as we're discussing CNN, let's let's broaden that out just a little bit. We're talking about elitism. The idea that how dare you not support Ukraine, but how dare you think you should be so aggressive on the southern border. This is a foolhardy conversation from people who have never sat down with America. Protecting a border has value. Keeping Putin at bay has value. Two things can happen at the same time. That's what I would say uh, to J.D. Vance, but certainly within that clip, he is correct. You have to deal with the problem and this fentanyl issue, this drug issue, this violence issue, this murder issue is a real one. In, in reality, though, when we had uh, John Bolton, the ambassador to the U.N., former ambassador, uh, on with us earlier, and he said, well, you know, you either arm the Mexicans and you give them the intelligence to do this or you do it himself, and, and he seemed to kind of waffle on that and I and that then afterwards my my parents and I were talking and we went my dad said well right if they're killing a lot of Americans why don't we just take them out and I'm wondering you assume that Mark Esper uh, maybe he had it right uh, Trump quote no one would know it was us we would just shoot some Patriot missiles and take out the labs quietly um, I think people might know that it was us if Patriot missiles came raining down on Mexico or hellfires or anything else uh, but what I'm wondering is, is why wouldn't Trump say something like that out loud when he was president? Maybe it turns out that Donald Trump has a better filter than we thought. Huh? And maybe he thought we should have this conversation privately before engaging it publicly. There could be a million reasons why he didn't have this conversation. Maybe because the CNNification of so much of cable news and other news outlets would attack him brutally. Oh, what a warmonger. He isn't droning his own citizens, a la Barack Obama. Uh, so uh, that's the, what he would get. That's the kind of hit he would take. And maybe he wanted to feel out the room first. I'm in favor of feeling out a room, but there's no doubt 
about that America would be in favor of actually going about protecting a border, which really exposes a part two of this conversation, that the Biden administration doesn't believe in protecting a border. It's yeah, this no, fight it, between Democrats and progressives about whether or not they should be John, a border, whether or not they're sovereignty. Yeah, I gotta, that is part of this. Yeah, no, it's a huge part of it. And, and Bolton was very clear about how there are a lot of policies short of uh, droning people, as much fun as it would be, um, droning cartel kingpins that uh, the Biden administration could be doing on the border and with the Mexican government that they are not, uh, a la your point. Uh, Tony, we'll see you in a couple blocks, all right? Right on. All right, see you soon, my friend. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.